Um, great, yeah, so uh, talking today about uh, tree traversal grammar. This is a formalism I've been developing just over the last few months. Um, it's an outgrowth of some stuff I've been doing really for the last few years, but it's sort of taking an interesting new turn lately. Um, so to understand what this theory is about, it's helpful to start by talking about uh, the nature of universal grammar. Uh, so the now dominant view in uh, generative syntax is the principles and parameters view, where we think of universal grammar as providing a menu of mutually incompatible parameter choices, right? So a, a bank of switches, you've got to set each one one way or another, and you end up with one of an ultimately finite number of different uh, language particular grammars that are mutually you know, uh, antagonistic, right? You have the grammar of English and not of Japanese or Mohawk, right? Um, at the same time, there's the recognition of the level of meaning, the base structure, uh, expressions in different languages are identical or nearly so. Um, so uh, tree traversal grammar has a very different view of universal grammar as immediately potent, uh, working off the shelf without tuning um, and without parameter setting uh, to provide the structural description of neutral expressions across languages. Um, so in this view, not only are meanings uniform, but so too is the grammar that determines the surface structure and possible word orders for each meaning. Um, right, so with that in hand, um, as you said, tree traversal grammar is a generative model of neutral word ordering across languages. Neutral meaning we're setting aside discourse information and things. Um, and the intended scope is quite different than standard generative studies where we're trying to generate neutral structures that are possible in any language while also simultaneously ruling out the neutral structures that are prohibited in all languages, trying to capture word order universals. Um, so at least currently, it's not intended to explain discourse information effects, um, WH movement, scrambling, topic, focus movement. Um, and obviously that's a big part of syntax. Um, this is what I have in mind here, something like um, what Chomsky talks about is the duality of semantics, right? That there's one system that does the sort of base thematic structure and another that handles contentful, meaningful movement. And so what I'm trying to discover the, the base structure components. Um, by its nature, this theory is not gonna tell us much about the ungrammaticality uh, of structures in one language if those structures exist in another language. Um, so I had mentioned last time something about uh, Niels Yerna's uh, Nobel lecture on the generative grammar of the immune system, the idea that you start out um, as a child able to respond to a great many environmental inputs and it's only by um, forgetting the ones you don't encounter that you form the adult system. Um, mainly something sort of like that going on here. Um, I'm also setting aside effects that, at least to my mind, vary incommensurably in different languages. So things like case and agreement. Um, obviously that's a bit controversial as those are sort of the usual suspects when it comes to driving uh, different word orders and the movements behind them. We have a different theory of it here. Um, and in this theory, the differences between the grammars of different languages are really a matter of e-language. Um, so there are habits of use and disuse of the larger space of possibilities that uh, generative grammar makes available. Um, there's Saussurian arbitrariness, lexical variation, the Norman invasion, um, important functional pressures of having to use it every day and having to learn it as a child. Um, and particularly to this theory, there's a, a further sort of factor driving language differentiation, which is that um, contrary to the usual view where for a single meaning, there is a single right order for it here for a given meaning there are many possible orders that means that there's a real problem when it comes to production you could there's many different ways to say it how do you choose just one to say well i think the obvious way is to rely on prediction that if you could predict how another speaker of your language would say that meaning then you could say it that way yourself and thereby we get the sort of feedback loop um, driving this sort of differentiation okay um, just a quick preview of what this theory does um, it gives us nice explanations of at least the following things. Universal 20, the final over final condition, affix hopping, cross serial subject verb dependencies. Um, we get a version of the head movement constraint that allows a tested long head movement configurations and derives in a new apparently true generalization about when those are possible. Um, Wacker Nagel effects, second position effects seem to come out well. I might talk about that in my next talk. Um, and we get a nice account of stylistic fronting as most famously seen in Icelandic. Uh, including various restrictions on it. Um, we also derive a variety of new, apparently true predictions that have no correlate in the literature. Uh, again, those might come up in my next talk. And the reason all this is interesting is that all of these effects, all of these predictions come out as immediate consequences of a 
single universal specification of uh, hierarchy of the base structure and a specification of the architecture that generates word orders from that. And that's it. There's no further constraints or mechanisms. Um, so in this theory, there's really sort of two grammatical devices, um, sort of similar to the aspects era model of deep structure and surface structure. Um, so here, the deep grammar is a bog standard phrase structure grammar that operates on LF, which is formatted as a string. Um, so this is what I call the LF PSG. Um, as I mentioned, LF is formatted as a string and in a sort of unusual way where if you think of the normal representation of a clause, the LF string is all the heads taken top down, followed by the arguments and adjuncts going bottom up. Um, as I said, this is read by a single universal phrase structure grammar. And from that, we're gonna build a really familiar looking base structure with the exception that all of the phrasal stuff, but you know, specifiers, complements, adjuncts, everything is on the right, all the heads are on the left. And at that level, we're going to reconstruct constituency, the C command relation and so on, all this sort of boringly familiar stuff. And that's good because these are very well-motivated properties of natural language syntax. Um, what's new and different here is the surface grammar, which is about trees and traversals, or there's an equivalent formulation of their bracketed strings. Um, and this is really different. The trees we don't use in the way we normally use syntactic trees. Um, and the trees aren't binary branching. In fact, they're anary branching. You can have, you know, 14 area branching on top of ternary branching and unary branching, any rooted non-tangling tree, any deep tree. Um, so the idea is that you, you know, the, the LF is independently given, specified by this, this you know, what, it's the phrase structure grammar. Um, you will build a, any anary branching tree with the appropriate number of nodes. Um, so sort of a free merge of the surface structure. Um, and then you'll go through that tree in what's called post order. We'll talk about that in a moment and write the LF, the elements from the LF string onto each node other than the very root. So this includes non-terminals as well as terminals. Um, as I mentioned, there's an equivalent formulation over bracketed strings where in that formalism, we're gonna write the LF string onto the right brackets in any legal bracketing, any what's called a deep word. Um, and uh, Word order then will be pre-order traversal of the same tree or equivalently in the bracketed string, it'll be the order of left brackets. Now, believe it or not, that's it. That's this theory of syntax. There's no other constraints. There's nothing else to say about it um, except for all the consequences. The first big one is um, star two, three, one. Um, so there's a forbidden permutation of elements from the underlying hierarchy. So given elements A, B, C in a connected hierarchy, I'm setting aside here cycles, which might sort of bottle up portions and make them opaque to the rest of the structure, as well, as I said, as discourse information effects. Um, for, the, for any three items, A, B, C, any word order of those is permitted on the surface except B, C, A, the middle, last, first. Um, and this is a theorem, not an axiom. This follows from the way that we get the surface orders from the underlying LF string. Uh, so to illustrate, um, let's start with just a simple one, two, three hierarchy. Um, and the first step, so here we're looking at the bracketed version of this. Um, first thing to do is just generate all legal groupings of three sets of parentheses. Um, legal parentheses means uh, at any point in the string, there are not more preceding right brackets than left brackets. And at the end of the string, there's an equal number of both. Um, so you generate all of those, there's five. You then write the one, two, three hierarchy onto each right bracket labeling. Two, three, one, two, three, et cetera. Um, the next step is to copy those labels onto the left brackets, as you see here. And the order of the labels of the left brackets is the word order. Um, you'll notice we get five orders, one, two, three, two, one, three, et cetera. And we rule out two, three, one. We'll systematically fail to generate that permutation. And this is gonna be our explanation for why there's this systematic gap in possible word orders, okay? Um, that's the theory of neutral word order movement. And it's really different than the standard theory. You know, the what, where, and why are very different. Um, so the sort of standard classical view is that there are individual steps of movement. There, there are actual operations that apply as you build up the base structure. So, you know, internal merge interleaving with external merge. Um, and being operations, they require individual motivation, whether in terms of feature checking, last resort, edge features, dynamic anti-symmetry, 
the labeling algorithm, what have you. Um, there's also the idea that the orienting landmarks of the base structure persist into the movement component, such that we can talk about objects moving to the specifier of TP or negation marking the edge of VP or these sorts of things, right? Uh, and it all comes out very differently here. Um, in tree traversal grammar, TTG, there, there are no individual operations of movement. There's no steps of movement. And therefore, they don't need independent morphological motivation. Um, the surface order, including all the apparent displacements, simply reflect the shape of the freely generated surface tree and how that distorts the underlying hierarchy. Um, and in the surface tree, objects are in a single position. So there's no trace and movement to another position. They're in one position. And that position encodes at the same time word order and hierarchy, which are read from the tree by two different tree traversal algorithms, pre-order and post-order. Um, and the LF structure, as we said, is built by the separate LF grammar. It isn't in the surface tree. So things like constituency, clauses, specifier, TP, those aren't properties of the surface form. Um, and sort of most importantly here, the, the different ordering behavior of different syntactic categories, different pieces of the LF hierarchy have nothing to do with their inherent properties, nothing to do with their semantics, their, form, their phonology, their morphological requirements. There's no different movement rules affecting heads or phrases. There's no agreement or probe goal operation, finding the closest thing to move, nothing like that. Um, the different ordering profiles for different things simply reflect how the two, three, one, condition restricts the possible surface position of different sort of source positions in the hierarchy. 